Hi, it's Friday, and I'm back on Unreal DVD Watchers. What's up? I missed you guys. You're all looking well, tan, relaxed, enjoying your summer vacation. Sorry I've been neglecting this channel. A lot of things happening in my life right now, and when stuff happens in my life, unfortunately, um, YouTube takes a back seat. I'm going to make a video on my um, main channel telling you all what's been going on, but um, for now I'm going to talk to you guys about a movie. So last weekend I saw two movies and I'm just going to talk to you about one, but I'll tell you which movies I saw. I saw X-Men First Class and Super 8. I'm going to tell you about Super 8 though. I'm making this video before actually looking on the Real DVD Watchers page, so if anybody has already reviewed it, oh well, I guess you can have like two different perspectives. You can have the female perspective of this movie. Super 8 is written and directed by J.J. Abrams and stars a bunch of little kids and um, the guy from early edition. He's also in Friday Night Lights and his name escapes me, I'm sorry. I really like him though. I just can't think of his name at the moment and I feel like a douche. Basically, this movie is about a group of kids who witnesses a train crash and something is in that train that um, isn't normal and then it affects the entire town and stuff happens and the kids are in the middle of it and grown-ups are clueless and that whole thing and it was awesome! So directed by and written by J.J. Abrams there was some lens flares. People hated the lens flares or loved them in Star Trek. Um, it seemed to bug the shit out of some people, and I didn't really have any issue with the flaring, so it wasn't, it's not really an issue for me. Also, there isn't very much flaring in this one. I'm gonna call it flaring, that's gonna be the technical term. There wasn't very much flaring in Super 8, it was just when, um, when the train crashes. That was the most flaring. Speaking of the train crashing, that was the coolest thing I have ever seen in my life. I literally went, holy crap, while I was sitting in a theater with people around me who chuckled at me as they watched this amazing train explosion raining fire and parts and it went on for a long time and it was awesome. And these little kids who were in it, um, I don't know any of their names because they're kids and I think they're most of them were first times and then one of them was Dakota Fanning's little sister. They were, um, they were amazing. They, they, they were entertaining. They were funny. I loved their dialogue. It was, it was, um, it was heightened obviously for, for a movie, but it was also relatable. Like as you're watching it, you were thinking, you know, I could totally picture myself talking to my friends this way in like the fifth grade and the sixth grade. Well, they were in junior high. So in junior high, I could totally picture myself talking to my friends this way and uh, they weren't like sugarcoating anything. The kids said shit and stuff like that and they they fought in the middle of ridiculous situations and they they were just, they were funny, they were dramatic, they were moving and they were great leads in this movie. They carried it very well. For me, this movie was almost like a mixture of Cloverfield and The Goonies. The credit for that actually goes to my cousin Kirk, although I had something along that same line, so um, I'm gonna give him half credit for that. It had, it had the camaraderie of the kids and like The Goonies did, and it had, um, and it had the, the kid friendships and all that stuff that you connect with like the Goonies did and it had the um, science fiction-y type aspect of Cloverfield and I just really enjoyed it a lot and I'm so glad that I saw it and it was a great summer movie. So that is my review for this week. Hopefully I will be back to my regular scheduled videos. I uh, I hope to see you next Friday. Thank you for watching. Scott is tomorrow. Until then, peace out.